How can we enhance the use of IVR Studio by calling Java methods to do tasks we normally wouldn't be able to do otherwise? In this IVR Studio video, we will add the ability for the user to remotely choose a call list by name from a folder with several call lists. To do this, we will call a Java method that scans the folder for .voc files and then generates a text-to-speech prompt that sounds something like this. Please press 0 for sample call list, press 1 for sample call list 1, press 2, etc. First we'll delete the message OK element and create a choice element. We'll add a choice element to the listen to message element. Just like the message OK element, the touch tone key response is 1. Name this element select call list. Record again is set to always true, so we need to move the select call list element above it. We add a new prompt element called start broadcast. This element will eventually run the Java method that checks how many .voc files are in the folder and then require the touch tone input to be less than the total number of files. For now, we'll set it to always true. Now let's add the go to element to catch any bad selections. This element will catch any bad input and jump back to the select list element. Select always true. Select the select call list element. This is what the final call flow diagram should look like. The select call list element is the most complicated element that we've seen yet. We have a Java program that gathers the names of all the .voc files into a string which plays using text-to-speech. We can then select a call list from the prompt. First we need to let IVR Studio know about the Java program in the Actions tab. Select Call Java Method. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at the Java code. Here we create our class. IVR Studio requires a default constructor. Here we create the get method. For parameters it takes the path in the file extension that we set up in the get call lists action tab. The get method returns a properties object. We initialize three variables. The first will hold the number of .voc files in the folder. The second holds the message prompt string. And the third will hold the list of files. Here we will collect all of the C call list files and store them in an array. Then we run a loop for as many files that are in the folder and exclude any file without a .voc extension. We increment the total variable and then add press index for the file name to the prompt string. Here we will fill up the properties object that we will be returning with all of our name value pairs. Then we return the properties object. Name the action get list. For this example, we put the jar file in the call list folder for ease of use. Type the path of the jar file here. The package and class goes here. We are using the class voicent.ivrsample.ivrsample.getFiles. We will use the get method from this class. In our class, the get method requires two parameters. The first parameter is a string, which holds the file path that we would like to search. The second parameter is also a string that holds the file extension of the call list that we are looking for. We put the long form data type here. Add the file path in single quotes. Add the string for the file extension. The Java method action is now set up. Now we can use it in our prompt. In order for IVR Studio to update the allowed variable list, we need to close the element and reopen it. Select the prompt tab. We will now create the prompt with the help from the properties object that is returned by the get method. Select the variable radio button. In the drop down box, select get list. In IVR Studio, Java variables must be called by the action name and dot syntax. To access our variables, we use getList dot 
and then the variable name. In our Java code, we return a properties object. In the properties object, there is a variable called prompt message. This holds a string that has the prompt that we created in code. Enter prompt message in the box. Now the prompt is set up to read all of the .voc file names. We need to set up the entry parameters for the start broadcast element. If the touch tone is greater than the number of .voc files, we will reject the call flow and it will fall to the bad selection element. Click Properties. The last result system variable has the pressed digit for comparison. We can check if it is lower than the total number of call lists by checking the getList.total variable add vg last result is less than get list dot total to the if condition is met box now we will need to add a variable to the incoming call route that will hold the list of name value pairs that our java class has created Open the incoming call elements properties. Select the variable tab. Add a new variable. We'll call it all call list. And initialize it to single quotes. Now we need to set the variable equal to the call list dot list from the Java method. Select the select call list properties. Select the action tab. Click new to create a new action. Select the set variable value radio button. Select all call list from the combo box. We will set it equal to the get list dot list variable from the Java method. That should do it. Now we need to fix the batch file command so that we pass in the digit pressed along with our file list. Open the Start Broadcast Action tab. We are going to edit the command line for the batch file. Start by deleting everything. We can't have it here anymore. Now we'll add new parameters. The VG last result will give us the key press of the desired call list. Add it to the list. Click the Add button and the all call list variable will pass the whole call list to the .bat file. Now the start broadcast element will have all the information needed to select the desired call list. We need to add a few lines to the batch file so that the selected call list can be used. The for statement will shift through the all call list variable list by the amount last result is set for. Next it will set the variable selected file to the .voc file that the user specified through the last result key press. Here we will add the variable that holds the selected file to the command prompt. Before we finish, we need to hard code some of the command lines that we removed earlier back into the command line. Make sure to save the batch file. This sums up our IVR lesson on calling a Java method. In the next video, we will learn how to interface with with an SQL database to check a password against an account number.